program. With Jack's special guest... Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our show. Now, I'm sure that you all noticed that my theme song sounded better than usual. And the reason for that is because instead of my own boys playing it, it was played by Lawrence Welk and his orchestra. And I found out that even with the uh, additional men that Welk has, it uh, really cost me less than my own orchestra. I mean, when you figure what I save on fumigating the studio, <laughs> lunches for the parole officers, <laughs> bail bonds, and similar fringe benefits. <laughs> Believe me, Welkin is orchestra is much cheaper. <laughs> and you don't know what a pleasure it is to do a show with, with a band you don't have to prop up. <laughs> well, I don't exactly prop my boys up, you see. I just sort of lean them against each other. <laughs> Remember once, the clarinet player stepped forward to play uh, a solo, you see, and it was like pulling the center pole out of a circus tent. <laughs> anyway, I'm so happy to have Lawrence Welk, because it gives me a chance to do the kind of a show that gives me a chance to do the... <laughs> <laughs> ladies, ladies, I'm right in the middle of a show. Mr. Benny, don't you recognize us? Oh, for heaven's sake, you're the president and vice president of my Pasadena fan club. <laughs> really? You haven't forgotten us? Well, of course I haven't forgotten you, but, uh, you know, I'm really right in the middle of a show. So, girls, why don't you go oh, right... Girls? You call us girls? <laughs> He's called us that before. Oh, yes, but this time he's got his glasses on. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, tell me, uh, has my fan club uh, gotten any bigger lately? Well, Emma has gained a little weight. Oh, <laughs> Mary. He didn't mean that. He's talking about members. Yes, I mean, how's my fan club doing lately? Oh, it's doing fine. We just got two members from Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad to hear that. And I want to tell you how nice it was of you to come over here to see me. Well, uh, well, what? Emma, you tell him. We didn't exactly come to see you. This time, we came down to see Lawrence Welk. <laughs> oh, well. Please don't get us wrong, Mr. Benny. We love your violin playing. But when Lawrence plays that accordion, we imagine it's us he's squeezing. <laughs> Mira, you promised you wouldn't tell that. <laughs> But you, evidently, you like Mr. Wells. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I auditioned to be his champagne lady. You did? Uh, what happened? Uh, she was the wrong vintage. <laughs> Look who's talking. Miss Glendale of 1902. 1903, smarty. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't come up here to argue. You came here to see Mr. Well, right? Well, I'm just about to introduce him, so why don't you go back to your seat? Oh, yes. Oh, come on, Emmy. He's going to introduce Lawrence Well. Oh, I haven't been this thrilled since, since Rudy Valley told me his time was my time. <laughs> They're so cute. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you Mr. Lawrence Welk and his champagne music. <laughs>
tell you that your music is just wonderful. <laughs> what? I said your music is, is wonderful. Jack, I'm afraid I don't... Oh, of course, of course, I'm sorry. I meant to say, your music is wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> You know, everybody mispronounces stud word. Yeah. <laughs> they do, but I will tell you, Lord, that really, it's wonderful having you, wonderful having you and your uh, fine musicians on my show. Thank you very much, Jack. And you know, you've had, gee, I've been listening to you for a long time. You've had quite a career. I mean, what, to what do you attribute your long, such a long success, you know, standing. Well, success. Jack, there are no doubt many reasons, but I think the main reason is because we never went in for that uh, wild, that uh, far-out music. Far-out music? Yes, like uh, Guy Lombardo and Wayne King. <laughs> or Sammy Kay. <laughs> yeah, he was crazy, man. Crazy. <laughs> You know, really, you have had, you know, and I've always loved your theme song. Such a beautiful theme song. But where did you ever get the idea for those bubbles? Well, Jack, to be honest, that came about by accident. It was during the days of my one-night stands back in the Midwest. We've been out on the road for about six weeks. And one night, just as we started to play, I looked up and there were all the bubbles coming from behind the brass section and Jack, it was beautiful, really beautiful. It was, huh? Well, what, uh, I mean, uh, uh, where did you get the idea? Well, really, uh, uh, from no one, uh, the trombone player was doing his laundry. Yes, well, thanks to a pair of dirty socks, I got a million-dollar trademark. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. But listen, everybody... What do you mean? Uh, you mean everybody in the band, does? they do their laundry on the stage? For the next five years, we were known as the cleanest music this side of Pismo Beach. <laughs> well... Yes, I'll join you. I'll join you on that. But... You know, uh, Lawrence, of course, in those days, every orchestra, they had a sort of a, a slogan, you know, and like, for instance, I remember even Phil Harris, when he was with me in radio, he was known as Phil Harris and his international orchestra. International meaning that he was as well known in San Diego as he was in Tijuana. <laughs> but, Lawrence, I, um, may I call you Larry? Call me anything you want, okay. Jack. Well, Lawrence, look at me. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, I, I want to tell you something. I hope you won't be offended at what I'm going to say. No, no, go right ahead, Jack. Well, you know, this thing of conducting an orchestra, leading an orchestra, that's a, that's a sort of a racket, isn't it? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? A racket? Well, I mean, there's nothing to leading an orchestra, isn't it? Isn't that just a racket? I mean, here you stand there with a stick like this, you know, and you're going up and down. I mean, if, if you had a hammer in your hand, at least you could be building something. <laughs> or cracking nuts. <laughs> but just to stand there with a stick up and down, I think anybody, I think anybody in the world can conduct an orchestra. I don't mean just you. I'm not trying to insult you, believe me. I think anybody can conduct an orchestra. You mean anybody can lead an orchestra? I think I can lead an orchestra. I'll show you what I mean. May I have your baton? Sure. Just a second. Now, will you just stay over there? Okay. I, I've never directed an orchestra before in my life. I want to show you there's not... Oh, uh, fellas! Fellas, you ready? Yeah. Uh, I just I want you to hear this. Just one second. <laughs> All right, boys. A one, a two. <laughs>
played a joke on me. They ran off the... All right, fellas, you can come back. You played your little joke. Come on back. Come on back here on the stand. All big funny men. Come on. Not your joke over. All right. Now, look at Lawrence, now I'm going to show you what I mean about conducting the orchestra. They were kidding me before, you know, running off. I'll show you that, that it's easy to do. Now, we're going to play, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to repeat that number, row, row, row. Ready? A one, a two. <laughs> they were just tuning up. Hey, boys. A one, a two. A one, a two. Now look at it. They followed you all the way. So why wouldn't they the minute why wouldn't they follow me? Well, Jack, you see, they have a certain loyalty to, to me. After all, we've been together for 30 years. Well, I know. Well, what about what's the drummer's name, the one that was loyal to me? Benedict Arnold. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> now look at <it>. Larry. <laughs> You know, you sound like you're ad-libbing. <laughs> I wonder. Listen, Larry, that when I asked you and the boys to come here to do a show with me, that I had an ulterior motive. You did? Yes. You know, years ago in radio, when I was in radio, I wrote a song, a very beautiful song, you see. And for some reason or other, it was a ballad. Nothing ever became it, but I took it to some of our greatest publishers. They couldn't do anything with it. I took it to Dmitry Tiamkin to get one of his arrangements. Nothing happened. I even took it to George Burns, and he refused to sing it. Well, <laughs> didn't that help? <laughs> Not at all. Now listen, but I'm sure, look at, I'm sure that with your orchestra playing it, It'll do something for this number. Well, Jack, was... I'll be glad to do anything I can, but I'm kind of surprised. You really wrote a song? I wrote a beautiful... It's a ballad, a torch song. <laughs> and I wrote the words and the music. The title. Well, wait till you hear the title. It's beautiful. When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. <laughs> I'll bet you've never heard a title like that before, have you? No, I haven't, Jack, and I've been in the music business for 37 years. <laughs> well, look, I happen to have a copy of it right here, you see? And I, I just want to sing these lyrics to you, and then I'm sure the minute you hear them, you'll, 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 want, you'll want to do this with your orchestra. It'll be a big help. Listen to the lyrics. They're every bit as good as the title. Now, read them. Now, listen to this. When you say, I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. When you ask me to forgive you, I'll return. Like the swallows at Serrano, return to Capistrano. For you... Wait a minute, Jack, wait a minute. Look. Serrano? Yes, that's a little, a little town in, in Italy. And the birds flew all the way from Serrano to Capistrano? That's right. Well, that's over 10,000 miles. A swallow couldn't possibly fly that far. Look at What do you belong to, the Musicians' Union or the Audubon Society? <laughs> now listen to this, will you? Listen to the rest of this. When you... Stop laughing at me. When you, 
When you say that you are sorry, then I will understand. Near the harvest moon, we'll pledge our love anew, our love anew. <laughs> so, my darling, though we parted, come back to whence we started. Whence? <laughs> yes, whence. That's a poetic form of the word where. But, Jack, look, if you can say wonderful, I can say when. <laughs> this finish if you can say what no so my darling so my darling though we parted come back to whence we started and sweetheart then I'll come back to you <laughs> now Lawrence you'll have to admit that's a beautiful song Jack if that's a beautiful song I've been hit on my head with one bubble too many <laughs> You can't tell by my singing it. I think your orchestra should play it, really. The that orchestra? Band. Yeah. But, Jack, fortunately, my men don't have the music to this song. <laughs> oh, fortunately. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I put the music on their stands, and they know nothing about it. I'm going to give it to them now, and we're going to play it. Then you'll see how good it is. Open the curtains. Up. Now, fellas, look at Turn the page. You, you got my music up there. When you say, I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. That's the number, right there. I can't find the part. Oh, it's uh, number 13, Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mr. Benny, I'm the concert master. I don't care. This is my song. Now, get off. <laughs> Looks like he swallowed Mickey Mouse and left the tail sticking out. which is more our style of music. You mean my beautiful torch song into a polka? Uh-huh. You think it would work? Yes, let me show you what I mean here. Well, maybe, maybe. Here. I don't know. Let's try it. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One, two, uh -huh.
ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all enjoyed the show. And now, once again, I'd like to present my guest star, Lawrence Welk. <laughs> Lawrence, I hope you'll be on my show again. Jack, when you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. <laughs> Good night, folks. I'll be seeing you soon.